it's time for another request concert. Hi. It's great to put these out. It's wonderful to do them. And um, it would be great if we got more people watching them. It's lovely. Anyone who enjoys one of these, please just send the link to a friend. Um, Until they stop saying, can you stop sending me those links with that awful singer? Awful singer and that guy that never stops moving around and choosing different instruments. And he doesn't stop talking. Well, now, the last concert we did, if, if you're a regular, um, was very modern, especially for me. Matt does all sorts of music, but me, it was very modern. So, um, in this one, we're going back a little ways. In fact, we're going all the way back to, we're going to back as far <laughs> okay. as 1610. <laughs> yeah, but we'll, we'll, we'll just help you out by only starting at 1910. Yes, we're going to start at 1910, then go to 1610. That's literally what we're going to do. After this concert, after this song, it gets a bit darker in this concert dark. and misty. Dark. dark it, it gets dark and it gets misty, doesn't it? Dark and misty concert. And for that, I've tried to offset that by giving you a bigger view on this camera and putting a bit more light in the picture, he which has. hopefully He's looks jo joyous. He's worked hard. You should have seen. Anyway, so this is from 1910. Mm. This is for This is for David. Indeed. David, thank you very much for your your request. I wonder if you miss me sometimes, then in brackets, I wonder if you care, which isn't quite the same as saying now, I wonder if you care. I think that sense of a way of saying, I wonder if you care, is sort of more modern. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think back then, it's like, I wonder if you care. So, that in mind. Now, what are you going to play? Well, I'm going to play this little uh, Neapolitan mandolin, which is from the 1890s. Uh, sponsored by rubber band. Now it's a very, it's a very <laughs> uh, technical fix that, and the screws are coming out. But it's okay, you know, it's getting there. Um, and uh, this was a the, the you know one of the very most popular instruments very popular. of the Edward. You were nothing oh. if you didn't have one of these. That's true. And it was uh, like having an Instagram account. In the it, it was, and then once the banjos and the ukuleles came out, if you didn't have one of those, same. Uh, but I should not say just in the UK, also across the British Empire, including Australia and Canada. And we're actually using an Australian print of this song. Yes, here we go.
makes a that's small but mighty. I've done some changes to it recently to make it uh, a little less more easy changes. to play. Um, but now, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a it's going to be a study in contrast in terms of size. You're going to go from that instrument. Hang on, wait this a minute, size. Sorry, on there. right? I anticipated probably what you were no, going to say. Okay. That's that's absolutely fine. So we got that there. <laughs> so we got we got this here, and we got this here, and I like <laughs> to play them both. The reveal. What's interesting about the mandolin and double bass is they're tuned with the same letter names, but in the reverse order. Really? Have you ever thought about that? Yeah. E, A, D, G. Different relationship, you know, because they're going in the opposite order, but the same note names. Isn't that marvellous? And now we've got this wonderful uh, sort of cutaway, what we call mat cam. Oh, that one, yeah. Yeah, that Probably camera. won't be any... Goodness knows where because it'll be. Because it shows, because he does some incredible stuff, and now you can finally see what he's doing, which is very important, I think. It's like a master class in crazy playing. Right, now what are we doing? We're going to do... And what are we doing it for? To, and who are we doing it for? Are these both for Rog? Yeah, they are. For Rog, we're going to do Misty, and we're going to do Every Time We Say Goodbye. Now, I think I might have mentioned that I have a, a category for certain songs. Uh, a rating system of martini glasses. So maximum is five martini glasses, minimum is one. Um, although you can make half a martini glass to make up a particular specific number as to how drunk the person is when they are singing it. Now, I think some songs just have an innate kind of drunkness. Like for example, this might be controversial, but The Man I Love, I think is tremendously drunk. I think that's four martini glasses because she's Oh, someday you'll come along. You know, you just imagine her leaning over the bar and, and, you know, several martini glasses in. And I think Misty and Every Time We Say Goodbye are both very... I love this that Matt's decided that we should just have simple... We're just in the bar. In the bar. And, you know, the double bass player can't go home because, you know, he has problems at home. And he says, you know what? Hey, I'll just... I'll just, I'll stay, just stay here. I'll just here, hang man. out here. I'll just... So he's just in the corner. He's not even being paid at this time. No, he doesn't even care. And it's not really peak time for the for the bar, but you know, the regular woman who just sits there and drinks and complains about her life is there. That's the scenario I see. Maybe the drummer's there in the corner, but it's gonna be operated by my phone. Yes, this is the one thing this. the camera doesn't pick up, no. unfortunately. Well, but it is interesting, it's quite a it's sight. There. So here we go. Misty. <clears throat>
Ear change vocally from the one to the other. I didn't realize that till we started. Ooh. I have to say here, um, Matt tends to choose the. He knows my voice so well that he chooses the uh, the keys. We very rarely, I'd say maybe ten percent of the time, are you're playing from music in the pitch that it's written. Oh, it's very infrequent. Very infrequent, especially when it especially when it comes to these because we're. You know, one we're trying to get 20, a good experience maybe. for you. One out of 20, maybe. The first one was actually written in the key that he was playing it. No, it wasn't. Was it not? No. I wonder if you miss me sometimes. Oh, sorry, I thought you went out of Misty and oh, thingy. The... Apologies. <laughs> no, I wonder if you miss me. Rare for a 1910 Rare. song, but it was... I wonder if that's going to fall over, because that would be rubbish if it does. That would be terrible, but at least you'll have filmed it. Well, maybe not. It's maybe out of shot, which would be terrible. No, I'll just... Hope you all can see that. Right. Right then. now, back to 1610, as promised. This song is requested by Ernest, and Ernest has asked for it. Now, Matt can play the lute, but he has a list. If I, I wonder if I should share your list in the description. <laughs> Matt has a list of, of instrument wants. Instruments that he wants, that he, he needs, and that he, ha he, you know, if he sat on Santa's lap, that he would say, in the order in which of importance. Um, but he'd happily have any of them, and he has them on his list. I'll share them in the description. So you can show more underneath there. Click on show more, and you'll see all of Matt's instruments. People are going to say, what's that? What's that? What's that? Yeah, what's they're, that? They're, they're, yeah. well, you can Google all of them. But anyway, um, he does want a lute, but he doesn't have one. Um, I once saw a concert, actually it was in the Swaledale Festival, um, and where there was an oud player, a world-class oud player, and there was a lute player who came along just to, to have a little discussion and to compare the instruments, because they both look very similar, very ah, similar shapes. Yeah, that's a good point. And yeah. the lutenist said, this is 500 years old. And the oud player <laughs> said, this is 3,500 years old. <laughs> <laughs> it's like top trump. So, in darkness, let me dwell. But interestingly, though, look at the similarity in construction from Ooh, yes. you know an ancient instrument to a Victorian. They both instrument. look like boiled sweets. Uh, yeah. yeah, that good God. I didn't actually. That's gonna it. sound horrendous. <laughs> anyway, um, so we'll also link a video to me actually playing the lute with Patricia. Yes, no, on a lovely, okay. lively song actually. Yeah, but, um, oh, come you from Newcastle with the lute and me. So in the meantime, have you told them which we're going to do now? No. Oh, yes, I have. But it may have escaped people's notice. It's called In Darkness Let Me Dwell. We're going to go one, two, three, and then two over. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I know when to turn a page. It was my idea of how we're going to turn these pages. That's not to say I'll do it perfectly, but... I'm not playing the nose flute or the castanets or the thingamajig or the other thingamajig in this at all. I'm doing nothing but sing and turn pages, so I better do it right.
You heard it before. <laughs> you heard it here first. I'm sure they have, but no. No, I don't think anybody's ever done that. To be quite honest, it's I mean, sometimes you sort of, sort of think with songs like that. Is that the only thing that everyone can play on the loop type thing? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, it's nice to have a different take on that. And there was a, there was a little. Uh, yeah, it's been arranged by Matt to suit. Now, uh, I wonder if this has got. Um, well, I thought we, you know, did a lot of word painting. If everybody looks at what that song's actually about, I thought the words were painted very well. Mm. Um, I doubt this has ever been done on this instrument in recording form. I'm sure it has been played in Austria or Germany or Switzerland as such, but probably not recorded. What do you think? 
I don't know. I, I very few people like, like comment, they... sub, subscribe, share. If you know of a recording of an eighteen-string contra guitar playing any selections from the Merry Widow, with or without voice or any other instruments, I'd be very interested to know. Do you know, seeing the Merry Widow at um, the Colosseum uh, in English, you know, as it's English National Opera, when this aria came along, I really got the sense that the whole of them, everybody wanted to sing along. Um, you felt this sort of brown swell of people and there were the words because that's the hilarious thing about the ENO. They do everything in English, you know, and they, because, you know, you've got to be in English, ENO, but there's still surtitles. Yep. So what the hell? Anyway, I won't get on that, but anyway, what the hell? But there they were and people could have sung along, but no, it's a soprano and it's very, very high. So this is absolutely, I really treasure this very old oh, yeah, and yeah, well true. used piece of music because it is in a low key, the key of E flat. I'm still playing in a different key to than it's written, but don't worry oh, about that. I didn't know that. Carry well, on. Doesn't matter. <laughs> but in any case, it's it's low, so that everybody can sing along. Um, that's true. That's, that's what a, they should have done at ENO. Point. They should have just posted and got a sing along. They should put a little bouncing ball in the uh, in the sur titles. This one's also for rock. Great song. And, and that's uh, the end of our little recital. It is. Tune in on. Uh, it's it seems to be Tuesdays and Fridays that we upload these. Approximately, yeah. So you'll see one on. And also, Tuesday as well. Make your requests at patriciahammond.com forward slash requests or patriciahammondsongs at gmail dot com. Yay! Right here we go, May Widow. Right, I hope my cushion doesn't slip off on this. Otherwise, oh, it'll be messy. Oh no! Right, here we are.
It's a thing. I'll have to stop these mannerisms. It's a great opportunity, these things, to film them so that I can take note. Anyway. So when we finish this concert, thank I'm just going to say much. thanks very much again. Thank you very and much. And Patricia's going to hold dead still so it looks really nice when we oh, fade yes. back out into the I mist. rush off. The rust and dark, uh, the, 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 the mist and darkness. That was a fun one. Hopefully it wasn't too uh, sort of lacking in a varied emotions. Well, but anything lit the way you've lit it cannot be possibly too dark. It's, it's, you've, you've really made it more true. People watching from America or Australia should enjoy things like 300-year-old clock. Oh, like you don't have 300-year-old things over there. I know you do. See you later. Thank you.